Actually, I was seven years when I began the piano. My mother was playing, uh, not professionally, but she was playing, and um, I, I knew already very small that uh, the world of the sound, uh, the music, the classical music, the, this world was uh, somehow consolating the soul. And uh, it was my home. I knew uh, from the beginning that I, w I would be in this music. In the world of music. Yeah. And did you always know that you wanted to play the piano? Did you try other instruments or was it always the piano? No, no. I knew it was the piano. And as uh, Franz Liszt said, uh, it is the, the ray of the instrument, the piano. So, no, no. It was my home. Actually, it's, uh, it's home for me to be in front of a piano. Not only for what I said, but also because it's the mirror of uh, where you are in your, the way you, you can go until profound to find the silence, because the sound uh, uh, come from silence and go back to silence. So we have to get, uh, we don't have to do only scales, exterior scale. We have to do interior scales a lot uh, to be able to find this, uh, this space, uh, this gratuity, this space of gratuity, this space of beauty, this space of silence. Yeah, it sounds like it's a, like a sort of an inner reflection for you as well, being able to it is, uh, zone out and really focus on your on your craft. Yeah, those images was uh, uh, they are very touching for me because it was the the registration of the five Beethoven concerto mm. uh, I did because this year we are doing uh, the anniversary of Beethoven, 250 years, and uh, it was such a challenge to uh, to do all these five concerto and also the triple. And uh, because, uh, you know, Victor Hugo, he said that about Beethoven, he said, this uh, depth man, excuse mm -hmm. my English, um, was hearing the infinite. Mm -hmm. And when I was young, I said, what a deaf man, how music he cannot hear, is hearing the infinite, three words who could not go together for me. Yeah. And uh, preparing all my life this uh, this registration, this um, uh, I could go exactly in this space, uh, inner space where he had to go to hear what he could not hear mm. physically, and um, it's a great present to hear Beethoven music and to play Beethoven music, because at the end he said, uh, I. I don't see any superiority uh, that kindness. Than kindness. You know? Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's a time to be kind, especially, yes. especially at the moment when, when things in the world are a little exactly. bit uh, unusual. You know, I, I would like to say to the people, be, he said to us, the last phrase he said, he said, uh, I, I did all this music for you. I, I, I so often thought about you and make you happy be it you know and uh, i would like to say to the people we are all going to be at home we are all going to be um, living something new a completely different new and different mm. life and please don't hesitate to hear beethoven to hear chopin to hear this music because this music has the power of consolation and and to elevate your soul now, Elizabeth, just because you mentioned there about these changes that many people are having yeah. to make to yeah. their daily lives, um, you were meant to be performing here in London. Yes. You'd come over from Switzerland to do that, and unfortunately, yeah. um, because of, of uh, what's going on, it had to be cancelled. How, how, how are you feeling about that? You know, we could do the, the concert in Crowley, but we could not do the one in, in, uh, in London. And I feel very sorry, not only for me and the orchestra, but for all musicians. We have all our performance cancelled for months now coming. And so um, I said to all my pupils, don't be, don't be sad because you, you will finally have time to really <laughs> practice. To practice at home. <laughs> and for all the other people, if you wanted to play the piano, please begin now. now is the time. There is no age mm -hmm. to begin. 
and um, we have to find uh, resources in our in mm. ourselves, and we have them. Now, Elizabeth, one of the things um, that you've also done throughout your career is perform your music in places where perhaps they yeah. wouldn't hear music very often, orphanages, refugee camps. Yeah. How did that start for you? Why did you decide to do that? It's already 30 years uh, uh, I created this foundation, Resonance, uh, and uh, we almost make 500 concerts in those solidarity places. Uh, myself, I do 100, but all my pupils, and uh, we are now in seven countries, Lebanon, Romania, France, Italy, Spain, uh, Belgium, and um, I think the real mission of a musician is to go and play there. Because we play in Cadogan Hall, okay, you play once, but what are you doing the rest of the time? Mm. Uh, our mission is to be with uh, the, the one who really uh, need it, and, uh, and I discover that this idea that mu classical music is only for rich and cultivated people is not real. It is. It touches the heart of every. Day. I have to know the the name of the notes and the phenomenology of music, but not you who, who hear it, you know. And people recognize if you are true in what you give them. Um, the, the when you're playing in these places, is that part of the charitable foundation that you set up? How does that how does yeah. that fit in? When did you set that up? It's a uh, uh, more than it's. 30 years already and um, it began because uh, I had a, a fan <laughs> a woman I love very much and one day she came to my concert and she said I it's the last one I said why she said because I have to go in a home and I will not be able to come oh. anymore I said I will come to you and that's what kind of yeah. made you realize and that you, you want know, to do that life is done by relation it's not that you have a plan if somebody would have told me all what I would have to do in this foundation, <laughs> I would have said no. But uh, one has to be confident that uh, there is a big plan for everybody. And if I could say to the musician today and to the people, to use this moment of quietness to really take your place. Because if somebody is at his place and don't want to take the place of another one, then the world will be nicer. Elizabeth, tell me about the, as well as the performances um, that you've been doing uh, in the first part of this year, you're also, uh, you've, you've been busy in the recording studio. Tell yes. me about some of those projects. Yeah, we, you, you saw some images. Uh, it was during the, the editing of the uh, concertos of Beethoven in Cadogan Hall. But two years before, we did all the adagio, the most beautiful adagio. And two years before, uh, the Chopin concerto, always with the RPO at Abbey Road Studio. But this time, the Beethoven concerto, we did it in Cardigan Hall, which is a wonderful place also for this, because acoustic is very good. Mm. But it was such a challenge. I mean, it was an experience also with the orchestra and the conductor, Pierre Vallée, who is absolutely great. And we have worked so much, you know, two years, every bar, every phrasing, and to be sure to give really <laughs> the best. And it was, uh, I never thought I could do it. <laughs> and so tell me about when that music is going to be released. It is, it is. You can find them now already number one, two, three, and four. Uh, Beethoven Concerto, uh, Signum is uh, here the English um, disc version, uh, uh, yeah, version, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, on Spotify and everything. So um, I don't say to the people to hear me. I, I just want to tell the people to hear this music because uh, it's very important to get in this part of us, which is bigger than us.